Welcome to Super Enzyme Justice League Season 2. Frank Sinatra in his song Fly Me to the Moon wants to see what spring is like on quote Jupiter and Mars. I hate to break it to you Sinatra, but Jupiter has an axial tilt of 3 degrees so there isn't actually a spring, and spring on Mars is characterized by raging dust storms. There are seven other planets in our solar system, sorry Pluto fans, most of which have a variety of weather on them as well. But let's say you get tired of all these storms and hurricanes here on Earth and you decide to pack up and leave. What does weather look like on other planets? Let's start with Mercury, the closest planet to our star, the Sun. Mercury is the smallest of our eight planets, and a rather dull one at that. It has no atmosphere, it rotates very slowly, and it has hardly any axial tilt, which means no seasons whatsoever. Add these up, and it means that the surface is either really hot or freezing cold. Since it rotates so slowly, the side facing the Sun can reach 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and on the side which faces away from the Sun, it can reach negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you were to land on Mercury, you would either freeze to death immediately, or you would instantly incinerate due to the heat and radiation coming off the nearby sun. Mercury, needless to say, is not a very hospitable place for people to visit. How about Venus, though? It has an atmosphere, it has a tilt similar to Earth, and it has some rotation. Does this formula equal reasonable weather? Yeah, I know. First, we should mention the runaway greenhouse effect on Venus. Venus's atmosphere, mainly composed of carbon dioxide, is super great at trapping heat from the sun. This means that the entire planet is a uniform 900 degrees Fahrenheit, making it the hottest place in the solar system. And if you were to enjoy that rather warm weather, your blood would boil and literally cook you inside out. Its atmosphere is also also super dense, almost 90 times the pressure on Earth, which would literally crush you like a Coke can. Unlike Mercury, Venus has quite a variety of weather. It actually rains on Venus, although the catch here is that it rains sulfuric acid, a substance so acidic that it would essentially melt your body. Venus does have some water in its atmosphere though, which, if you've had even the most basic chemistry class, you understand that water and sulfuric acid don't get along so well. In fact, combining sulfuric acid and water generates a fair-sized explosion, which means it quite literally rains explosions on Venus. Needless to say, this would shred your body. It's also worth mentioning that despite the intense heat, it actually snows on Venus. But the snowflakes can weigh as much as a half pound and are made mainly of iron. So if you were to build a snowman on Venus, you would technically be building Iron Man, which would instantly corrode due to the sphere rain. As you probably guessed, Venus isn't a great place to hang out. What about a little further out past Earth? How about Mars? At the equator, temperatures can reach 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the equivalent of a warm summer day. However, Mars actually has a very thin atmosphere, mainly made of carbon dioxide, which is very turbulent. Your summer day wouldn't last too long since winds tend to kick up and generate enormous dust storms. Entire movies have been based around this. The storm had escalated to severe, and we had no choice but to abort the mission. And one particular dust storm in 2001 was able to cover up the entire planet. Mars basically makes the Great Dust Bowl look pitiful, so unless you really enjoy having your skin ripped off by dirt, Mars isn't the place for you. Now on to the gas giants. First up, Jupiter. As I mentioned earlier, Jupiter has no seasons whatsoever, but that doesn't really matter when hurricane season lasts all year. In fact, the most famous of these hurricanes, the Great Red Spot, has been swirling for about 400 years. For comparison, the storm is so big that three Earths could fit inside of it. You may have also noticed the stripes on Jupiter. These are caused by the planet's jet streams. There are two jet streams here on Earth, one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere. However, there are about 30 jet streams on Jupiter, each ripping through the atmosphere in different directions. It's also worth noting that the atmosphere on Jupiter maintains a balmy negative 220 degrees Fahrenheit, which allows the atmosphere made primarily of ammonia to freeze over. Besides 300 mile an hour frozen ammonia storms, Jupiter has insane pressure within its atmosphere, which is literally enough to break bonds in the atoms of your body. Jupiter is not the greatest planet when it comes to planetary destinations. What about the good old ring planet, Saturn? Saturn has an atmosphere, not unlike Jupiter, that is made primarily of hydrogen. Since this atmosphere is so light, winds can reach speeds of roughly 1,000 miles per hour, which, in comparison, is about the same speed a bullet travels. It's also worth noting that if the air on Saturn were actually breathable, which, believe me, it isn't, you would not be able to inhale because the air around you is moving so fast. Also, it would shave off the outer layer of your skin, but the point is moot. Saturn is home to the longest storm in the solar system, about 6,000 miles across. If you were somehow able to make it to the surface, the carbon in the air would be pressed by the atmosphere into sheets of graphite, also known as pencil lead. All told, Saturn really isn't the greatest vacation destination unless you're cool with being stabbed by pencil lead traveling a thousand miles an hour. How about the planet with arguably the most disputed name, Uranus? Uranus is a fairly boring planet weather-wise. It is the coldest planet in the solar system though, with temperatures usually at a steady negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit. Uranus is quite strange considering that it is tipped entirely on its side with its north pole facing the sun. Moreover, the magnetic fields of Uranus do not align with the poles of the planet at all, allowing the aurora borealis to appear at the planet's equator rather than at the poles. A visit to Uranus would result in your body literally crumbling due to the extremely cold temperatures. Finally, and my personal favorite, we have Neptune, our most distant planet. Neptune wins the competition for the fastest winds at around 1500 miles an hour, roughly five times the wind speeds in the worst tornadoes. It's also worth noting that a trip to Neptune would include hearing the sound barrier break every time the wind blows. Since Neptune's topography is the flattest in the solar system, there is almost no friction to slow down the wind. Finally, I should mention that despite the chilly temperatures of about negative 346 degrees Fahrenheit, it does rain on Neptune, but not in the conventional sense. Allow me to explain.
explain. Neptune's atmosphere consists of mostly methane gas molecularly arranged like this. The intense pressure of Neptune's atmosphere sheds these four hydrogens, leaving a ton of plain carbon in the dense atmosphere. In the upper layers of this dense atmosphere, the carbon atoms are pressed incredibly tightly together, which turns into diamonds. These diamonds then fall through the layers of the atmosphere as diamond rain. Neptune sounds like an incredibly lovely place with diamonds literally falling from the sky, but when diamonds are combined with 1500 mile an hour winds, it ends up being less lovely and more like a planetary blender. So while you might need to carry an umbrella sometimes, you don't really have to worry about sulfuric acid falling from the sky. Remember that the next time you have to put on a coat and just be thankful that it isn't 371 degrees below zero, which is pretty nice. Our videos are made possible by your support on Patreon. If you'd like to get a bunch of stuff while supporting Super Enzyme Justice League, go check out our page. And if you'd like to learn more about our universe, put your question in the comments. We'll be happy to create a video. Thank you.